Has anybody been thinking about that as they've been watching us? Like, how are they gonna get this out? <laughs> because we've sure been thinking about it. Yikes. This is VAT19. We use our curiously awesome gifts to make awesomely big videos. Each week, our team has to figure out how to pull off a new idea and try to create the next hit. This could be awesome. This is the gummy Rocket Pop, an unmeltable version of the summertime classic. Now, I want to celebrate America's 245th birthday by making one of these at least 245 times larger. All right, let's get started. If we want to make a giant version of this gummy Rocket Pop, we are going to need a huge custom mold. And we have a plan. We'll start by cutting the shape of a bomb pop out of a giant piece of foam. We'll then cut it into three pieces. We'll put each section into a box and fill that box with liquid plaster of Paris. Once hardened, we can remove the foam. After stacking, our plaster pieces form a perfect cast of our Rocket Pop. The final steps are to add the stick and pour in the melted gummy. And if nothing goes wrong, we'll have a giant gummy Rocket Pop. But there is a lot that could go wrong. Yes, and I'll blame it all on you. All right, just to give you an idea how big this gummy's gonna be, this is gonna turn into a popsicle stick. 300 pounds of plaster fairy. See it over there. We need 12 bags. I'm going to channel my sculptor and use this glue and all of this foam to make a huge block that I can carve the popsicle out of. You'll see, but I think, I think it's gonna be awesome. Sloan, seriously, I can see you. I okay, can see but like Hidden in Plain Depot, don't sleep on it. She's the worst. Get back to work. Okay, so you'll notice that this doesn't exactly look like a popsicle right now. One thing that's gonna help is I'm going to carve this into first a cylinder, and then we'll work on getting all the cool shapes out of it that'll make it actually look like a bomb pop. First thing I'm gonna try to do is just chunk off all of the corners using something. Get ready for a montage of tools. Yeah, actually, don't get ready for that montage. Um, hand carving the foam was not going well. Didn't look so good. And Jamie was no help. Hey. Long. I want that looking real nice. Just like this bomb pop, okay? Oh, Chris. Measure twice and cut once, okay? Right, guys are looking good. Oh yeah, forgot about that. But then we did have a breakthrough. Jimmy, we still have so much work ahead of us. I just, I wish that this looked, um, better. better. Oh, well that was easy. No, no it wasn't. It wasn't, uh, we'll, we'll show you. Since we were already working with foam sheets, we realized we could cut out the bomb pop gear shape and stack them up as we go. We traced the pattern and then cut each individual two inch thick piece. We were able to glue those together, sand them smooth, cut the slope leading up to the top of the pop, and voila. Hey, not bad, I didn't screw it up. Now, we just need to cast it in plaster, but to do that, we need to slice it into three pieces, one for each color. Doctor, the patient is ready. Scalp. Is that hereabouts? Yes. No, no, please. Please wait, no. It's popsicle stick time. What? I love working here. What, what? Employment. This is gonna make a pretty big popsicle. We've got three molds to make. We've done all the math. So we gotta start mixing some plaster. Let's do it. It looks like pancake batter. Makes me hungry. I hope I did the math calculations right here. So this is literally the first time that either of us have ever used plaster, and we screwed it up. Yeah, so we were just a couple of minutes late on our pour, and Plaster of Paris sets up so thick, it so quickly, it already captured air bubbles and ruined our mold. Yeah, so we have to go back and do that one again. Oh, oh <laughs> Jamie, you can't say that. Hey, it's only my second time working with plaster. Plaster doesn't make you swear. This is a perfect mold. Like, this is exactly what it should be looking like. There are no gaps, no bubbles, no lumps. And this is why Plaster of Paris is so awesome is because you pour it, ideally, when you're going fast enough as a liquid. So it disperses itself into every little nook and cranny. So much better on the second pour. Trial and error is like hard sometimes, but you can just see like just from doing one five minutes later, how much better we got at the technique. It takes the plaster a few hours to set up and then... We can take all of the foam out of the molds. Empty. One third of a bomb pop. 
Oh, the edge is falling apart, guys. Why? Probably a bunch of hammering. Or just grab a big clamp. Yeah. yeah. So, Jamie, would you like to tell the good people at home why our mold is leaking? Whoops. That's my bad. I put the box back together. There should be a screw there. I don't know if you can see that gaping hole. And then pan down over here. <laughs> yeah, that's my bad. That's my bad, team. Measure twice, cut once, okay? Boxes work better when they're fully screwed together. I feel like you should know um, it better. It's not your first box. I made a box! I'm glad everyone's here with those clamps. It got me. Well, despite Jamie's screw up, we finished two of our three molds. Yeah, and the final one is gigantic. The nose of the bomb pop. It's gonna be so big, we're gonna need more people to help us pour all of this plaster. We have 200 pounds of plaster of Paris, 20 gallons of water. We're gonna mix all of it together. We got a bunch of our friends with us to help. This is going to get heavy. If we get this done and it works, everything should be smooth sailing. Come on, Sloan. So let's go for it. Are we pouring at the same time? We're pouring at the same yes. time. Yep. Good job. Great work. Everyone, uh, politely treat this box like you're a childhood bully, and we just need to kick the sides a little bit. This is what we want, all these bubbles coming up. This went excellently. Okay, so everything went really well with that final pour. And thank goodness for that. Now, tomorrow, after the plaster's set up, we can remove the last pieces of foam. Sloan isn't here today, so I'm gonna be working on getting like 16 inches of foam chiseled out of this thing. We got all the foam out, so we now have our three pieces of our Bomb Pop mold. We can pour gummy into this, gummy into that, gummy into that thing, add the stick to it, and we should have a Bomb Pop. I don't know what Sloan's doing. She's not here. She's probably doing something weird. Sloan! Yes! What was that? Like Lady Gaga? You're just saying that to hurt me and you know it. <laughs> All right, anyway, we have 300 pounds of gummy that we need to go melt and pour. We are finally ready to fill our giant popsicle mold with all of our gummies. So we have our red gummy bears, our blue gummy bears, and our yellow-ish. They, they'll look white when we're done with them. Let's, Let's go. go. Finally time to start filling this thing. Um, we needed a funnel, so this is a full traffic cone. We're making it happen, people. This might be our best gummy build ever. Sloan, I'm proud of us. This is cool. We did pretty good. Usually with our giant gummies, we wait about 24 hours before we demold them. This one is so big though, we're gonna give it some more time. Today is finally the day we get to demold our giant gummy. Haha, <laughs> it's chisel time. No, it's, it's, Jamie, it's hammer time. Can we just do this? Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, it's looking good. It's looking great so far. So we're three hours into chiseling away the plaster and it's nearly free. But this thing weighs over 300 pounds, so we need some help just to move it. Okay, we gotta put it down. We gotta put it down. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. 
This is by far the biggest candy we've ever made. We could barely hold it. They look, like, they look like butchers now. <laughs> it tastes real good. America tastes great. Freedom tastes pretty good. For a patriotic popsicle that's unmeltable and way easier to lift up, pick up the gummy Rocket Pop from Vat19.com. Happy birthday, America! Mm. Vat19.com